Didn't see a lot of videos on this, so I figured I'd make one. Can't even really see it down there. This is the KBD Performance 63 and a half millimeter turbo. Uh, I did do it myself, so I bought their LLY exhaust housing and then the rebuild kit came with the front cover. So the cartridge for the turbo is the same. The back plate is the same. It has the bigger front cover. So it's essentially an LLY turbo with a billet wheel and a tin blade. Just rebuilt with like the 360 thrust washer and all that good stuff. Um, there's really not much to see up here. I, I got the Whirly Fab heat blanket on it. Um, should have put it on before I installed it because it's not really secured, but at least it's protecting that AC line. But I might take it out because it is obnoxious. So just be aware when you do this turbo or tin blade for that matter, it's loud. Well, uh, I'll get you some clips here messing around my property. Um, and we're going to town here in a bit, so we'll drive it around and show you how it sounds going down the freeway and everything. This is in cab with the windows up. You'll hear it's pretty loud.
or here, a turbo is pretty damn loud. And like I said, like I said, like I said, I'll show you the parts I got from, I have another rebuild kit from them. It's not exactly the same, it's just the LBZ turbo rebuild, but same idea. Like I said, I bought the LLY exhaust housing, so it has a little bit bigger um, turbine exhaust wheel. It, uh, it's bolt on, everything fits. It's the LBZ cartridge the same. Like I said, a bigger front cover to fit the bigger 63 and a half millimeter wheel, which I did put a billet wheel in it. Um, it was like, it was a whole kit and it was like six to 800 bucks, something like that, I don't remember. A lot cheaper than buying one of these turbos brand new and it's not that hard. Swapping it out was harder than rebuilding it. Rebuilding it was pretty easy, but I'll get the parts out real quick and I'll show you what it all comes with. So here's the parts, here's the exhaust housing, the unison ring and the veins. Uh, the only difference between the LLY exhaust housing and the LBZ exhaust housing, from what I can see, the LLY turbine veins are thicker. They're like 15 millimeter, the LBZ are 13.2, I believe. Um, I did opt for the high flow veins I don't know if that makes a difference in the sound or not. Some people say it does, some people say it doesn't. Um, and, oh, and differences, LOI's bore is bigger. 66 millimeters, this is 64, I believe. Um, something else I didn't know when I did it. I guess, and people say that in here, the LOI housing is not optimal. LBZs is better. A lot of people send their LLY housings out to get ported or they do it themselves. I guess the LBZ is pretty good. So, yeah. If I would have known that beforehand, I probably would have done some work to it. Help reduce the back pressure and you know reduce EGTs and all that. But I'll get this out of the way. This is the turbine and compressor. Factory 13 blade, factory with 11 blade, I think. Only difference is I got the 10 blade, which is what makes it whistle so much. The billet wheel probably does whistle as well. Probably does add some, I'm sure. And this is what I took out, obviously. It's good core, polished it up. Probably rebuild this turbo, or I, I, I will, because I did get this kit. This is their just 360 degree rebuild kit. Comes with O-rings for the solenoid snap rings. Actually, I think those are mine, but yeah, anyway, there's that. And then this, I believe is different. I think it comes, I think my kit came with this and the front cover. This is for an LBZ. You can get these machined out to fit the LLY stuff, but they had it all ready to go. So I just purchased everything. Like I said, it wasn't even, it was like 800, I think, out the door, maybe. It, uh, it was not bad. So if you're at all mechanically inclined, you can get this done. The biggest thing is cleaning that cartridge and everything else, making sure it's nice and clean, making sure the uh, this guy and other things, I, I suppose, Rotate freely, make sure your unison ring doesn't have any cracks in it. Clean those veins up really good. If you have access to a parts washer and a sandblaster, it'd be good to wash and blast this so you can get rid of any carbon buildup, any soot, anything like that. Like these, you want these to move freely, and they do. So I don't remember what I did with the uh, cartridge. Might have, uh, oh, here it is. Right where I left it. So this is what hooks to the unison ring and spins to make them or, um, cycle. So clean this out very well. You don't want any grit, dirt, whatever contaminations in this. You want that to spin freely. And then once, once you got all that, you just put it back together. There's plenty of good videos out there on YouTube. That's all I did. And uh, yeah, that's it.